Hey, hey. We are back. We are back. We are back. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's your girl, Dr. Brandy, and we are alive. So don't don't mind the truck outside they interrupting my groove, but they moving. They going. So alright. We we gonna get there. We gonna be alright. We gonna be alright. Yes, we gonna be alright. Alright, so it's your girl, Dr. Brandy. We are coming to you live at 8 o'clock tonight instead of 7.30. Um, I'm actually still on a class, kind of. So I'm paying attention. So I got this one in to the class. And I got this one in because I am chilling and I want you guys to be able to hear me. Hey, James. Welcome. Thank you for coming to check me out. We are hanging out tonight and just having a good time. How are you? How are things? I feel like I haven't talked to you in forever. How are you doing? Um, yeah, so tonight um, we had to get on a little bit later because I was on class. So, you know, I had to make sure that I got the things that I needed to get. And now I'm here chilling with y'all. So tonight's topic is going to be a good one. And if you caught the live stream last week when I was on uh, with our special guest, Dr. Mia, um, who was talking to us about all the things that you can do for anti-aging strategies, you know, we got a lot of great feedback about that. And so I wanted to come on and talk specifically, specifically about um, how you can help to prevent and treat issues with vaginal dryness so because I, I know you probably are like dude what did I walk into so I, I will not be offended if you like I got to go because yeah y'all talk about the vagina but you know if you stick around you're welcome to stick around I'm not gonna kick you off but that's what we talking about tonight um so with that being said you know who I am I am Dr. Brandy and I am a board certified OBGYN. So that's why we're talking about vaginas because that's my line of work. Um, and an Amazon number one bestselling author. And I am your sex and pleasure coach. And I teach women how to feel good in and out of the bedroom and how to get their sexy back. And so tonight's topic, we are gonna be talking about something that I, um, I'm very excited to share because it is so, so, so important. Um, we're going to be talking about vaginal dryness and lubricating and things like that. Hey, Daniel, thanks for jumping on. So glad to see you. Um, I know you normally catch it on the replay, so you're here live. That's awesome. Oh, is that B? Phoebe, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. So glad that you are here. So yeah, so tonight we're going to be talking about um, vaginal dryness and what you can do to help that if you are experiencing that and what you can do to try to prevent that if you, you know, you want to make sure that it's not happening. So, you know, for the most part, when I talk with patients, when I talk to clients, they are saying things like, you know, it hurts or it's dry or it's just uncomfortable when um you know when i'm having sex or even sometimes they will notice that it's dry and uncomfortable even if they're not and they're experiencing issues with like itching um, on the outside of the vagina they're experiencing problems with leaking urine when they cough sneeze jump going to the bathroom frequently um, those kinds of things and so when they come to see me as a patient, you know, I do all the stuff. I do the exam. I check to see what's going on. Um, and we talk about options because there's options. There's stuff to make sure that you don't have to go through all of that. Um, and one of those options is just using something called a vaginal moisturizer. And there are a few that are out there on the market um, the one that you probably heard the most about is called Replens. That one take is something that you can put inside the vagina and you put it in every two to three days 
And what it does is just um, slowly melt over time and it moisturizes the, the tissues there, right? So that's one thing, um, just in terms of treatment. But there's a whole host of things that you can do to help that. And there's some stuff that you can do to prevent it. So I think we'll start with the stuff that you can do to help it. And then we'll talk about what you can do to prevent it. Cause I've also had patients and clients who come to me and they're in their twenties and in their thirties. And they're like, I don't understand. I'm not in menopause. Why is it dry? Why is it going, you know, why does it not, why am I not lubricating? Like I normally was or expecting to, um, yeah. Um, BB, it's, it's, it's like a suppository. It's, um, it comes in a little package that you open and you just slide it inside the vagina. Um, so it is a suppository. Um, but yeah, so people, you know, women who are young can still have issues with vaginal dryness. Why? Well, there's a couple reasons. Sometimes it is the type of birth control that you're using that can make things dry down there. Sometimes it's because you just had a baby and you're breastfeeding. Because when you breastfeed, that kind of shuts down your normal estrogen production. And it puts you in a state where you have less estrogen circulating in your body and less estrogen going to the vagina. And what's happening is that the less estrogen that's going there, the less stretchy the tissues are and the less lubrication that can come to the area. Hey, Tamika, thanks for jumping on. So glad to see you. I know we're, we're coming in late. This is Dr. Brandy after dark right now. Um, so we're talking about lubes and vaginal dryness and what you can do to treat it and what you can do to prevent it. So we're talking about the treatment stuff right now, but, and why, why it can happen when you're young versus, you know, it happening when you get older. So there are a few different things that can make you lose your estrogen level or make it go down um, and make things drier. So birth control can do that. Um, being postpartum and breastfeeding can do that. But you know something else that can do that that you wouldn't even think about is not drinking enough water. If you don't have enough moisture in your body, you won't be able to make a lot of lubrication. So you got to make sure you're getting your eight to 10 glasses of water. Um, or another way to calculate it is to take your weight and divide that by two. And you drink that amount in ounces of water a day. Now I'm going to tell you, I'm going to warn you about this right now. When you start that, the first three or four days, your body's going to be like, what the? And you're going to be in the bathroom because, <laughs> because your kidneys are like, why are we getting all this water? We got to get it out. We got to get it out. But then your body will equilibrate and things will settle down and you'll be okay. So, and you can start gradually increasing the ounces too, if you don't want that major, like you going to the bathroom every 20 minutes because you're drinking all this water. So just increase it gradually. Oh, BB says she finds that condoms do that with the certain brands. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. Um, and it may, it may be that it's causing irritation because of the spermicide that's on the condoms or the lubricant, the other lubricant that's on the condoms. That actually may be more of the issue as opposed to vaginal dryness, but, um, you know what, BB? We we can talk offline and you can tell me, but sometimes it, it can be the issue. It's more of an irritation that's happening um, to the vaginal tissues as opposed to it being an actual dryness where you're not making enough lubricant. Hey, Dr. Hassan, thanks for jumping on. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so you can have vaginal dryness at various stages and ages um, there's stuff you can do about it. One is just if you're having dryness and it's not associated with sex, but you're noticing, you know, the tissues are irritated and itchy and things like that. First, you know, go see your doctor to get checked out and make sure you don't have an infection like bacterial vaginosis or yeast infection or something like that. And then, um, you want to, if all of that is fine, 
and it looks like the tissues are well estrogenized, meaning that they're nice and this rosy pink color. They're stretchy and elastic. You're not noticing kind of that sandpapery feel. Um, then it may be something else that you need to do and you can start with just a vaginal moisturizer. Hey, Diana, thanks for jumping on. So glad to see you. And so that's the first place to start with a vaginal moisturizer. Now, another option for vaginal moisturizers is using organic coconut oil. And that is a great kind of natural solution. If you don't, you know, you're like, I, I can't do replens or some of the other chemical stuff. Oh, hey, Crystal, thanks for jumping on. But you want to make sure that you are keeping things looking good and feeling good. Oh, I miss you too, Diana. You can use organic coconut oil. So you want to use the product that is in the grocery store, like the cooking aisle. Um, that's where you want to get your coconut oil because you want to make sure that it's safe to be eaten because you, you just never know there, there could be some other things that are happening that you want to make sure you don't you don't get your partner sick if some other things are happening right right so you got to use the organic coconut oil you can use olive oil too um I'm just not a big fan. I love the coconut oil because it makes me think of, you know, being on the beach and, you know, pina coladas and stuff like that. So that, you know, helps the mood as opposed to, you know, olive oil. I'm thinking about, um, you know, Italian food, which may or may not be a bad thing if I'm hungry and I want to eat some food first to, you know, get my energy up. But that's, that's a whole other conversation. I digress. Anywho, <laughs> coconut oil or great organic so that you can make sure that it's safe to put on your tissues as well as to have your partner to consume it if it happens to go that way, right? And we were talking about, if you missed it, we were talking about um, oral sex facts and fictions this past Saturday with the, the virtual pleasure principles class. So we were talking about oral sex and how to make it good and how to make things taste good and all of that. So if you missed it, you missed it. We we might I might be convinced to do it again if enough people are like, yep, I want I want to hear that. So if you want to hear that, put yes in the chat or I'm in or something. Put that in the comments and we'll we'll see about resurrecting that class because it was good. It was good. So yeah, so replens Organic coconut oil, olive oil, those are all great moisturizers. <laughs> BB said, damn it, she missed it. Girl, it was good. It was good. Um, and so those are great things to, to say, okay, let's just keep the tissues moisturized, right? Right? But what about when you're actually in the middle of it like you're like i need something because we are about to to get busy what can i use well coconut oil and, and olive oil are still good to use um for actual intercourse but but you got to be careful now if you are using latex condoms you can't use the coconut oil because it'll break down the condoms and then you will end up with um, the pregnancy risk and the risk for sexually transmitted infections. So that's the first caveat. You can't use those with latex condoms. The second caveat is you can't use organic coconut oil with silicone toys. So toys that have the silicone or medical grade silicone on them, you can't use the coconut oil for that because it'll break down that material. And then you bought this nice toy and you like this toy, but now because you did, you put the stuff on there, it's, it's jacked up. You can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> All right. So BB and Diana said, I'm in. All right. So we might have to do it. We might have to do it. We might have to do another class. Um, so yeah, so you got to be careful with condoms and with, with toys, with using those. All right. So then another option is a good water-based lubricant or silicone-based lubricant. So both of those are great. 
But if I had my rathers, if I had to say which one I think you should get, um, if you're going to be in the shower or in the tub and doing some tub play or shower play, get the silicone based one. Because the water-based one, it ain't going to do you no good. You're going to be in there like, what? Dr. Brandy told me about this lubricant, and now I'm in the bathtub in the shower, and it ain't working. Hmm. I didn't tell you to get the water-based. I told you to get the silicone base. Now, the silicone base is more expensive, but one, you can use it in water. Two, it lasts longer. So, you know, the title of this live, Slippery When Wet, that silicone, the silicone-based lubricant is what's going to get you to that slippery when wet. Um, so you want the silicone-based one. It stays slick and slippery for a much longer time. Um, so it's, you have to reapply it less often, right? Because who wants to be in the middle of it and he got that good stroke and you like, wait, it hurts. I need some more lubricant. So you need the silicone for those reasons. Now the water base is still good, but it gets a little sticky, a little tacky um, quicker. It gets that way quicker. And so, um, you know, what What are some good brands to to consider when you're, you're in the market for a good lubricant? Um, I am not a fan, not a fan of KY, not a fan. Mm -mm. I do not like it. I do not like it. I do not recommend KY. One of the good over-the-counter ones is Astroglide. Even their water-based one is really, really slippery and slick. So I like Astroglide. I like a brand called Wet. Their Platinum Series is really good. And that one's a silicone-based one, so I like that one. There's a... Well, you guys know how I feel about Lilo Toys. And Lilo has a good lubricant too. Their lubricant is, is pretty darn good, especially for my perimenopausal and menopausal ladies. The Lilo is, is awesome. Their personal moisturizer. Um, and then finally, now, like literally this year, there is now an FDA approved lubricant called Momentum Intimacy. And that one was developed by an OBGYN, not me. I, would, I wish it was me, but not me. But it was developed by an OBGYN. It is FDA approved, meaning that they went through the process to make sure that this is safe for you to use, safe and edible. It's safe. It's, it was created by an OBGYN, so it's not going to give you no yeast infection or BV or cause you irritation or any of that stuff, right? So this lubricant is thebomb.com. So if you want to know more about that, let me know. Private message me. If you got my number, text me. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> Because we can talk and I'll tell you about that lubricant. But that lubricant is the bomb.com. So then they have a water based variety and they have a silicone based variety. So if you if you want some some more details, yeah, hit me up and we'll talk. We'll talk. Cause it's good stuff. Um, yep, those those are the lubricants. So now we want to talk about what we can do to prevent some of these changes because oh the and this company for the momentum intimacy they are black owned they are black owned so you can get it from you can get it from him you can get it from that brand it's it yes <laughs> i stand by that product yes it's good is good. So those are some of the, the lubricants that you can use during sex. But how can we prevent some of these changes? Because wouldn't it be better to prevent it than to have to treat it? That's what my thought process is. So one is just recognizing and knowing that there's stuff that you can do to prevent it. 
Um, not all doctors know about it. Not all gynecologists even know about it. Um, and so one of the things is just to regularly use the vagina. And what I mean by that is having regular sex or using sex toys because that stimulation actually keeps the blood flow going to the tissues and that is what helps with the lubrication happening. So when you lose estrogen, we don't have enough estrogen. If you haven't already kind of built up the tissue and it's, it's like, yep, this is what we're doing and we're going to keep doing that, you know, the tissues will start to collapse the blood vessels will start to collapse and as you get older sometimes the blood vessels will not work as well as and so you're not getting enough blood flow to the vagina to those vaginal tissues so when you don't get enough blood flow that's actually what is creating the lubrication so if you're not getting enough blood flow, then you're not going to get enough lubrication. So you got to make sure that that area is getting stimulated on a regular basis. And if you need any recommendations for toys, either for yourself or for, you know, just you, if you're going to do some self-play or if you, you want to use something with your partner, because there are, there are so many, so many toys, so many things. I, I, I'm sorry, I get excited when I talk about it because there's so many things. I This week, I got a box from Lilo of some of their new stuff. So I'm super excited to, to give you guys some recommendations about some of their new stuff. So if you want to know, just, just let me know. Get in, cut, get in contact with me. We got, we got some stuff to talk about. Um, if you want, you could even get on my schedule at drbrandyobgyn.com. And we have a, a quick little strategy session so I can hook you up and tell you, you know, what to get, what you need to get and all that stuff. But yeah, so you can use toys or with your partner, just have, you know, some regular sexual activity. And that is so important. So important. Now, if you caught me yesterday um, with my live, we were talking about how there was a new study that came out that said that people, men and women, are having less sex these days. And, you know, they were talking about how what that is going to look like in terms of mood and well-being and all these other things. Um, and, you know, they they even mentioned, which I already know and I talk about a lot, how great sex and great orgasms help to extend your life. They help you to live longer because they help you to decrease your stress and to sleep well and lower your blood pressure and all of these benefits that, you know, come from great sex. And so, you know, people are looking at that now and trying to figure out like what's what's happening, you know, and why and how and all of that other stuff. So it's important. It's important for you to take care of that aspect of yourself because it literally is part of your life force, your vitality. So, you know, that's, that is part of the reason why I'm so passionate about these topics when I'm talking about it, because I know that it, it has the power to transform your life. And it's not just, you know, sex is inserting tab A into slot B and you have a good time. There's, there's more behind it. There's more to it. So that's why I'm talking about it. And that's part of why I have my mission that I do. So you need to be having sex. You need to be having regular sex so that you are helping to keep the vagina in tip top shape. So that's one. Second thing, you can use something called hyaluronic acid. Now, the, the name of it, one, is a mouthful. Two, you think acid, why am I putting acid on my vagina? That's a no-no. But Hyaluronic acid is actually something used in beauty products and we use it typically on our face um, to help to plump up our cells and to make things look um, younger and have a glow and all of that stuff. And so hyaluronic acid, it comes as a suppository BB. Don't trip. It's not actual acid. I'm not advocating for you putting acid on the vagina. That is abuse. No, we will not be doing that. But you got to put the hyaluronic acid so that it keeps the tissues nice and plump and full 
it helps to keep that blood flow going to the tissues and it helps with lubrication because it's drawing moisture to the tissues as well. So the hyaluronic acid is the business and it's especially good as a preventative. It's, it works when you, you know, if you're in the perimenopausal or the menopausal transition, but it is much more effective if you start it before you in, encounter the vaginal dryness. So that hyaluronic acid is the business too. Then um, prevention wise of things. So just being regularly sexually active, the hyaluronic acid, you can sometimes give uh, get a little bit of estrogen or DHEAS. Um, generally that DHEAS has to be compounded. So you would have to talk to a doctor and they would have to give you a prescription to take to a compounding pharmacy to have that created for you. And then it's usually, it comes as a cream with an applicator. Um, similar to if you, you know, if you're old school and you, you've used the seven day like monostat cream for a yeast infection, similar to an applicator like that. Um, and you would put that in, you know, a couple times a week just to keep the tissues maintained. So that's an option too. So yeah, those are the things. Those are the things. I think that that's, that's a good amount of stuff to, to think about and to chew on, I think. So what I will say is if any of that, you know, piqued your interest and you want to hear a little bit more, or if you have a specific question, um, jump on my schedule, drbrandyobgyn.com and let's talk about it. I can get, you know, we can get into a, a strategy session and in 20 minutes we can have a plan. We can have a plan for you. So you'll know what you need to do to prevent some stuff or to help some stuff if you are already having issues. Um, and we'll teach you, you know, what you need to know to keep yourself safe so you're not getting yeast infections and BV and other issues because nobody wants that. Nobody wants itchy, smelly vagina. Nobody. Mm -mm. Okay? So get on my schedule, drbrandyobgyn.com, and we'll talk, right? All right. So... I'm going to get out of here because I my class is still going. So I got to get off of here and go back to class. But I will talk to you guys soon. Um, and I'll keep you posted about the, the next oral sex facts and fictions class since you guys want to get in. And we'll do that. Okay. All right. So take care. Thank you all for showing up and hanging out with me. Thank you, BB. So glad to see you. Tamika, uh, Diana, who else is on here? We had Dr. Hassan. We had Crystal on here. Thank you, Crystal, for showing up. I, I miss you too. Um, yeah, so we are good. We had Daniel on here and we had my cousin James on here. So yeah, so I will see you guys next time. You know who I am. I'm Dr. Brandy, board certified OBGYN, Amazon number one best-selling author and your sex and pleasure coach. And I teach women just like you how to get your sexy back and how to feel good in and out of the bedroom. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.